Hey, what's up, buddy? Did you need something? Okay. Oh, 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 it's you. Hey, what's going on? It's Taylor. This is EV Electric. God. Quit f***ing it up. Today, we are going to do a full walkthrough of this car. Very unbiased, you guys. I'm just going to show you, lay it out as it is. And this is for you guys who are considering it and you just want unbiased, you just want to see what's in this car, what's it all about. Before we get started, you guys, I just want to say if you enjoyed this video and liked it so much, please give me some feedback by hitting that thumbs up button. And if you loved it so much, hit that subscribe button. I do appreciate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk you through every part of the car and this is so you guys can know it and then I'm going to give my experience about it. So I've had this car for about 30,000 miles or over 30,000 miles and obviously I have some experience with it that you may not have. So let's get into it. We're going to start with the exterior of the car. Now starting with the outside, obviously yours is not going to look like this, but I can tell you that this will offer some help for you guys for multiple colors because you can see here immediately that you can see the difference of white and black dirt on the car. So at least that's going to help you, right? But obviously the car is not going to look like this for you, but you can still see the shape of the outside and everything. So um, I just want to first talk about the paint on the car and the quality of it. When I picked my car up in 2018, the paint on most of the Model 3s were very under industry standard, so to say. And they had a lot of things with it and they had like fish eyes and stuff like that, which are little dots on there. And mostly white had fish dots, fish eyes for some reason. In 2020, I can definitely tell you that the paint is near perfect, but it's still something you wanna just look around and make sure what's going on. Another thing to note about the paint and the quality of it is I've noticed it scratches a lot easier. This is my first black car and you have to be very careful with this paint. As we walk along to the back here, one thing you do need to know is that dirt likes to collect a lot back here due to the aerodynamic shape, I guess. And it flings all the dirt here. So you can see there is a lot of dirt, but here's the look of it. And mine is a little bit lowered and on different wheels. So expect that, but Here's the front too. Now, some people say the front of the car looks like a frog or a duck. I'm just throwing that out there. Also, another thing to note are the two different colors with bug splatter. Just like the back, this is the favorite spot for bugs. So if you live in a bug infested area, you're in for it. So the design of the outside is definitely a good design. It's not too crazy and it's definitely not too weak. It's it's very standard looking until you mod it out like this. But I'm just saying before that it's very standard looking and most people don't hate it and most people aren't like totally obsessed with it outside of Tesla owners of course. Now one thing that comes with this all glass roof is a lot of heat and and sun. So when I drive I have a hat back here there's my hat. So I have that hat back there because the sun will go right through the glass, right through my sunglasses and hit me in an annoying spot in my eye. So that's why I have that there. So we've mentioned some things about the outside of that car. Now let's talk about the inside. Overall, the inside is a very minimalistic design and it's pretty well strategized. Everything's placed in a pretty good spot. Also, you could see that there's definitely not a lot of buttons. But yeah, very minimalistic, very useful, and everything you need is basically on that screen. There's not a lot of buttons anywhere else. One thing I'd also like to note is that other than people not being able to know how to get into the car, they, they can't get that right. They also don't know how to get out. And this is the way you get out. You just push this and then push the door open, but they'll reach for this emergency lever down here which you don't wanna pull all the time. It's not good for the car. Now, when you sit in the car, you definitely don't see a lot. There's very minimal. And by the way, that steering wheel, that steering wheel is not a stock wheel. So don't expect to get that. The regular steering wheel is just all black leather. But when you sit in here, 
there isn't a lot and that's a good thing and also a bad thing if you want to look at it that way so the good thing is is that it's a clean non-stressful looking design the bad thing is everything you need is on that screen and if you don't know how to use that screen properly and fast while you're driving you'll have to like stop or figure out what you're doing while you're driving which could raise some hazards and by the way the reach when you're sitting in the driver's seat to the very far end of the screen is quite a far reach so if you don't know what you're doing it's a far reach that you're going to be leaning pretty far and not paying attention while you're driving that's one thing i've noticed for sure now in the driver's seat you have the regular turn signals and then you also have your high beams here and this will enable the high beams automatic or always on but you also have a button here and what that button is is the manual windshield wipers and when you hit that it'll do the windshield wipers when you hold that it'll do the windshield wipers but it will also spray water now if you want to do regular windshield wipers you're going to have to go here and tap this and now you will have access to your wiper speed automatically one thing i'd also like to note is that auto really sucks and i tend to use this over auto yes you heard me right i hit this every time instead of putting it on auto i don't know why i could just use one of these but when the rain changes i just end up using that so Hopefully Tesla can fix the auto. It's always been an issue though. And we'll just turn it off there. So this is one thing I would like to know is while you are driving, you will definitely have to know how to reach this, tap here, tap here, and know what you're doing. So you'll start to see that minimalistic design is awesome, but when you don't know where stuff is, it really can start to be annoying to you. Now I will tell you after 30,000 miles or even after a couple hundred miles of driving this car you really start to know where this stuff is Most of your daily needed stuff are in the quick control Which is nice because that's the first one when you click here. It always brings up quick control now You're probably wondering what these do They don't do much for your driving This is to change the song previous next song pause volume up and down and this side is going to be more of your autopilot stuff. Notice the screen here when I tap this way or this way, this changes the distance that your car will be from the car in front of you while on autopilot. And these scrolls are for autopilot speeds and this stop is for your voice command. Here, here's a fun one while we're sitting here. Open the glove box. Next topic I wanna to talk about on the interior are the seat. Now, I get this one a lot with white seats. Taylor, don't you make a mess of these seats? And the answer is yes, I do. I am not a clean person. I don't clean these seats a lot, and that combination is not good. Let me show you what my driver's seat looks like. Now, I can't guarantee you that yours will look like this after 30,000 miles. Um, I think mine are a little worse because of the combination of me not cleaning the seats and always being dirty. So if you can't see, there is basically just a layer of like dark blue dirt that goes throughout. Maybe I can even wipe some of it off. But anyways, that's what it looks like. Honestly, it's not bad. I'd expect this to be a heck of a lot worse. And I haven't washed these seats in a long time as it is. So you can expect a lot of this to come off, but you know, regular, pretty unwashed car, this is what you're gonna get. As for my other seats, which are satin a lot less, they don't even look like they have issues at all. Only right here. Obviously with the black seats, you won't have this visual issue, uh, but of course you will have that dirt there. You just won't be able to see it. Another thing that I get with these seats are people say, are you scared to drink coffee in this car? Knowing that if you spill, you're screwed. Well, I want to show you this video of me pouring hot coffee on my seats and then drinking it off the seat. I don't know why I did that. Well, here you go. Woo, baby! Hold on, we're gonna drink it a little bit. Ah, oh, just cause I'm mental. All right, let's let it soak in for a little bit. So I hope your guys' day is going well, huh? I hope this stitching goes well too. We poured half a cup of coffee here. 
Let's see how well this does, man. It feels pretty good. So I hope that answer is that there. It just cleans off. It's not a big deal. A lot of us owners spill coffee and stuff on these seats all the time. Not a big deal. Hey, how are you doing? I'm editing the video right now and I forgot to put in one of the most important things that should have been said. And along with the interior goes what's above your head and you have this headliner that goes across and it's that tan color and it's awful and it's terrible to clean and I don't know, I want you to notice this now because in this next driving clip, you guys are gonna see the dirt that's on the headliner and there's a lot over my head, like above where the seatbelt is and I want you guys to notice that and that's just regular wear and tear. Yeah, so I just wanted to point that out that the headliner is really annoying and it, any little scuff gets it dirty and scarred and scratched. There are some cleaning kits out there for it, but I don't wanna get that and I really wish it was just like black or something like that. Like the Model S it has black on black or white on black. It would be nice. Now the next thing I wanna talk about is the screen because this is a huge, huge part of the car. It literally controls everything. So it's definitely worth talking about. And what I'm gonna do here also is I encourage you to pause the video, but I'm gonna go through every one of these and you can kind of pause and see what's there. I'm gonna go slower though. Um, and then I'm only gonna mention some notable things. So a lot of cars have stuff like how to adjust your steering wheel and how to adjust your mirrors. It just happens to be in a different spot, but you get the idea. So I'm not gonna go through and explaining that. So here you have quick controls. This is your main thing. And just like an iPhone, you know, there's your screen brightness. Now here's a really cool part, and this is how you connect to the car. So you can have phones connected here. You can have key cards, more key cards, more phones. And then there's also another way to connect phones. Now this is your keys. I, I wanna keep this clear. This is how you connect keys. How you connect a phone to Bluetooth with music is right here. Let's get back over here. So this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, it's kind of funny how this is in here. I don't know. I feel like this could be in another spot, but whatever. Display. This is kind of cool. So just like an iPhone, you have night mode. So this would be what it would look like in the day. And at night, if you don't want white blasting in your face from this screen, you can turn it on night mode and you can turn down the brightness and it's awesome. I leave it on auto. It does a fantastic job. What you guys will notice is there's a lot of stuff to change and a lot of stuff to move around, I guess, so you can change your time and all that kind of stuff, which is pretty cool. You can totally set your preference and you can also get Celsius here for you non-Americans or Americans who want to be like the rest of the world. And on to driving, this is definitely some stuff I want to mention in here. so. Your car normally will be in standard, but you can put it in chill and it will bring up a chill sign here, which I'll show you. Chill, we're chilling. Anyways, what that is gonna do is that's gonna greatly decrease your acceleration, but you'll still have the ability to do top speed. You just won't have the ability to accelerate as hard. I personally don't like it. Um, it's. Maybe I'm just used to a faster car, but when you're in chill mode, it's not fast. When you're in standard, it's very fast so you can get out of the way or you just have more control, I feel like, in standard. So I tend to stay in standard. And I don't know and I don't think chill mode actually does a better role in efficiency. I'm sure it does because you're limiting your acceleration, but I've tried to do some research and people haven't found much about it. Also, regen braking, that is if I'm on the gas and I let off, it's gonna hit the brakes and it will show the brake lights being hit for people behind you. And if you're used to a gas car and you just wanna slowly make that transition, you can turn it off. And low still does it a very small amount, but you really won't even notice, which is pretty cool. So you can turn that off. And stopping mode, while you are like this, let me put it in drive, while you are in drive, that is not a cone. There's no cones here. But anyways, 
while you're in drive, you can hit the brake and it'll put it in hold. And I can have, oh, I didn't have my seatbelt on, so it kicked me out. But what hold is, is you can take your foot off the brake or gas and your car will stay there and it will hit the brakes for you. Creep is just like a gas car kind of, where if you let off the gas, it will slowly move forward. And roll is the same thing as hold, just without hold. <laughs> so your car will not hit the brakes for you. And if you let off the gas and brake, your car will roll backwards, forwards, wherever the hill will lie. Now this is a whole part in itself. So I'm not gonna explain too much here. I would recommend you to check out some videos on autopilot because that's what all these settings are. But there are definitely some customizable features for autopilot including some of these emergency things down here, which are definitely worth noting, but they're pretty self-explanatory. So I invite you to move your eyes to the bottom of the screen. Rocking and rolling onto navigation. This is kind of cool. Just think of your phone like Siri, like me. I don't want her talking while I'm driving. So I have her off and I just have it displayed here. So while I drive, there's no voice command for me uh, with navigation. So she won't tell me to turn left. It'll just show it and stay quiet. Just how I like it. And then these other things here are, you know, you can just read the pause and read. On to safety and security. You will never really need to use this, but this is how you turn your car off. Now, sentry mode is something I definitely want to note. And there's some other ways to do sentry mode. But what sentry mode is, is while your car is parked, your Tesla will use the cameras to detect and then use those cameras to record movement around your car. Mostly if someone hits the car or does something like that, it will be recording and most likely it will be recording long before they even hit your car. And then you can turn on cool things like if you honk your horn to save the clip, I would recommend that just in case. Another cool thing to mention here is that Joe mode is a quiet version. So if you have like a kid in the car that you don't want to start to wake up and have crying all day, you can hit Joe mode and it will quiet down the regular dings and stuff. Another cool one here is cabin overheat protection. This is if your cabin heat gets over 102 degrees, it will automatically turn on the AC to keep it under that temperature. I love that because it just makes stuff last longer in my opinion. I'm sure all this stuff doesn't want to get baked, mostly the screen. While we are on this cabin overheat protection, I would also like to mention that the app is amazing and you can turn on your AC heat or cold, seat heaters, all that stuff. You can turn all that on and off through the app anywhere in the world. I love doing it when I go in the pool on a cold night and I turn on that heat before I get out. You may think, what is wiper service mode? Well, these wipers don't just pull up and come out how a regular car would do. You have to change it into service mode. You can see it right there. When I turn it off, they go back down. And you have some cool features here. Just like a giant phone, you can factory reset it. You can also change the wheel sizes. And there you go. So here's just the update kind of stuff. And this is how you want your updates to come. I want the most advanced, which means these could possibly have bugs, but you are gonna be one of the first to get it. It's not gonna be a total hack fest, but it might have some bugs. Standard would mean you get these updates a little bit later when most of these bugs are cleared. For charging stuff, you can tap here or you can tap here, and this will just bring up the screen and this is where you're gonna set your limits, which I need to change. We have to do the lockdown charging setting, which is all the way down here because we don't want to overcharge our battery for no reason. Moving on over, this is the music section. This is pretty self-explanatory, so I invite you to pause and check out your options here. Moving on to the next thing, you can kind of pause and check out these if you want. Um, just a couple things to note here are this energy graph, which is gonna tell you a more accurate than this. Now this can also say miles on it if you remember that setting that I showed you before. And if it does say miles, you can actually get a more accurate reading of that because this tends to be off. And yes, we do have some cool things like games and theaters in this car, which is 
Really, really cool. And here are the controls for the AC and all that good stuff here. You guys know what those are, front and rear defrosters. These are the seat heaters for the front and back. And there are how, this is how you change the AC. You can tap, you can go like this, or you can go here. All that good stuff works for this car. Multiple ways to do things, which is what I love. And when you go into here, you can see there's quite a bit of settings here. Some stuff I wanna mention about this is that you have dog mode and camping. So when you are in the car and you are sleeping in this car or something like that, you can turn this on to have the AC on all the time. Dog mode, when that's on, if I were to get out of the car, it would say the temperature in here is 70 degrees. Please don't break my window. I love my pet. This is how you control the air conditioning so if i want it to be more of a stream in my passenger's face you can go like that or if you want to break it up a little bit like that this is to activate the rear ac usually it will detect if a person's back there and automatically do it every once in a while it doesn't and then that's where that button is and then we have some pretty cool settings here this is all the seats so every seat is heated in this car and you can adjust it for everyone because they have no control in the back, which is interesting. So you have to do it all up here. Now, I kind of find this annoying when you're the driver and someone back there is asking, can you turn on my seat heater? And you're trying to pay attention and you have to, then they go, then the screen disappears. And then you go, no, I want it on one, three is too hot. Then you have to go back here while you're driving and you have to put it on one for them. Okay, Johnny, that can get a little annoying but that's the AC section there. Here's the navigation, pretty straightforward. Enter it in, you'll go there. It'll send you the fastest route. Also, one thing to note about this is if you do somewhere far away, like let's say I go to Las Vegas, it won't just take me to Las Vegas, it will actually plan out my charging. I will have to stop and charge and it will plan that out for me in the most time efficient and battery efficient way. Here are the seat settings in this car. You can have, I think up to 10. And this changes the seat, the driving area. It will literally change my AC to turn on and off every day, all that kind of stuff. This is for sentry mode here. That means if I get out of the car, sentry mode will now be activated. This is your dash cam here. So this red light means it's recording. I have a USB down in my center console that helps this car record at all times. You need a USB for that to record. Here's home link. This will open and close your garage and you can set it so you can go here and you can change it to how far away you want it to do it and you can do multiple houses yes yes your car connects to wi-fi yes it connects to bluetooth and there you are and just like the iphone if you want to know where you are you can tap here and it will take you right to that spot and this screen here to finish up this is just your screen that kind of sums up stuff it shows the video games and stuff you can play on here fun stuff there and it shows what the car is, the VIN, the miles, what update I'm on, all that good kind of stuff. Okay, this covers the screen and most of the stuff that the screen has to offer. We are now going to talk about space. No, I do not mean space as in outer space. I mean, we're going to talk about the trunk space and what this car has to offer. Let's start with the interior here. Every door has space here. This is a perfect spot for like a towel or something, but every door has this with a water bottle area here fun note water bottles don't spill if you put them there it's more space here and it's a little bigger the back actually does have a little bit more space than just those two things you can pull down this and you have more cup holders here you also have some things here doesn't offer too much but hey it's something now when you get in the driver's seat this is where there's a lot of space and we have the glove box obviously so I just like to quickly show that and note that. But you also have a ton of space here. You have this tray where you can put a lot of stuff. I emptied this out for you guys so you can see all the space. But you have a big cavity here and it's all lit up. So there's a light on in there too. This is for your phones, by the way. There's my sentry mode USB, which you probably can't really see, but that's where it is. And then you have this huge cavity. Now, one thing I've noticed is I have a lot of stuff and I have my sunglasses, my brother's sunglasses, my other pair of sunglasses. 
I have cameras and all this kind of stuff that I put in here. And there really isn't much organization. So when this is full, it's filled like to here with a bunch of junk and I can't organize it. You all have, you just have to throw it in there. At least there's that for like your wallets and stuff. Great space in here though. Really, really nice. Very, very useful. Moving on to the front, you have to open it from either the app or inside the vehicle. And there's the space for the front. Water sealed, pretty safe space to put stuff, but it could be safer in the car. Onto the trunk now. The trunk has this, and it has a lot of space down here that goes very deep. It's a good spot for like water bottles and towels. And then it has my favorite spot here. This is the stuff that you use sometimes, but you don't want to have it in the way of the trunk blocking all this stuff. And this is what I have. So I just have like a first aid kit and stuff like that in here. But look at how much stuff I have. I have a toolkit, skateboard, all this detailing stuff, sunscreen, first aid kits. Look at it all fits in there and I have plenty of room more for stuff. So you can imagine if you go camping or sleeping in this car or taking it out, whatever, to the desert, you're set with this car with space. There is a ton of space in a ton of useful spots too. Another cool thing about the space in this car, the fact that everything is controlled by an app can allow you to have people get it wherever you are. So for example, if you are out camping somewhere and you need to grab something there, you can just unlock it for someone on the app. Overall, driving the Model 3 is a very comfortable car to drive, it's easy to get used to as well. I know switching from a gas car to an electric car may seem a bit rough of a transition, but it's really not that bad. The hardest thing to get used to would be regen braking, which is when you let off the gas, it starts hitting the brakes. In a Tesla, that you can toggle that on and off, which is nice. But when you drive this car, it's very comfortable, very smooth. The bumps aren't too bad. For autopilot, you have the wheel here and then you can tap down twice and that's gonna enable it. And you really don't have to do much else. Now we are on a city street, which is what I would not recommend you to do. This is mostly for highway use, but the future is coming quick and it's quickly going to be very, very good on city streets. But as of right now, it's not the best and it still will go through red lights and stop signs and all that but that is quickly changing you guys and it's going to be pretty cool and by the way if you want it to stop at street signs stop lights and fully drive through regular traffic that requires fsd autopilot is mostly just for one lane just straight driving and it'll do the rest so that kind of sums up driving i just want to touch up and say that with daily driving, it's a very easy to connect car, perfect for daily driving. For performance, you have this insane performance and with a few bit of like performance mods, this car can be a real like track machine, um, but it is a little bit harder to connect to the car initially. So that's gonna sum up driving. If you guys wanna hear any specs on this car and know any kind of specs about it, um, I encourage you to just Google these specs. They're out and they're really easy to look at now. So the next thing I wanna talk about, we're coming up to the last thing here after this, but uh, this car is very plain. And obviously you can see I made it a little bit less plain. And I don't mean go crazy, but what I'm trying to say is that there are things that you can do to make this car look a little more you. They're, they're basically like a, a flat blank palette for an artist to paint on, so to say. So you have this great car, one color, very minimal, minimalistic, very plain, all that stuff. And you can do just minor things. So like, for example, you know, get a, get a different colored center console. It protects it. It makes it more you, that kind of thing too. There's great mods for protection, like clear bra on the lights, on the, on the bumper, all that kind of stuff. If I didn't have clear bra on this, I'd be yelling at myself to get off. And the final thing I wanna mention is Tesla's end. And what I mean by that is, like is Tesla cool if, when you're an owner, is Tesla gonna be weird? Are they gonna be like warranty freaks and all that kind of stuff? And the answer is Tesla's pretty cool so far. And the employees there are awesome and they're great people. As the company gets bigger, more cars are out there. They're being a lot stricter on their warranties. Like if you pass 50,000 miles, you're done. 
it used to be if you pass 50,000 miles and your extended and your warranty is up, you can say, "Come on, can you please give me a little little help here?" And they'll do it. Not anymore. Um, service centers are pretty slow here in California, but I've never been to a service center and I've had this car worked on. I had a couple very minor things like the charge port and a tail light had to be removed and replaced and someone actually came here and they did it, which was pretty cool. I didn't have to do anything. I just handed him the key and he pulled it out and everything. And you get great service with Tesla. It can be slow, it can be frustrating, but so can any other company. And that's gonna finish this video up. Perfect timing, the sprinklers just turned on to make noise. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you got to know this car a little bit better and I hope some of my experiences um, told you a little bit more about this car than what a lot of people are saying. So I think the non-biased way of just laying the car out there with my experience in a non-biased way was a pretty good way for you to get to know the car. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you, I'll see you in the next video.